Hi everybody, uh, my name is Ira Haynes. I am a mechanic and fabricator in the shop. I'm also the late shift uh, lead and I'm just going to be walking you through the steps and process of doing a regen and what a regen is and pretty much everything I can tell you about it to help you complete a regen successfully. Uh, I'm going to walk you through a regen process on a Freightliner. Um, the first thing I'd like to talk about are the different symbols that will appear on your dash. And our trucks have this card on the visor and it's going to explain to you when these lights come on what you can do about it. The first symbol we have here is what looks like a puff of smoke going through a screen or a filter. That light is pertaining to the DPF or diesel particulate filter. The second symbol is going to be a puff of smoke with a little temperature bulb. That symbol is pertaining to a hot exhaust. The last symbol is this little one right here and it's another puff of smoke with what looks like droplets of water and that is pertaining to the DEF or diesel exhaust fluid. What we're talking about when we're talking about DPF or regeneration is when you're burning diesel through your motor it's creating soot and that soot has got to be captured and the way that we capture that is in the DPF and as that, as that DPF or the diesel particulate filter becomes clogged we need a way to clean it out. What we do is, is we do a regeneration and it superheats the DPF turning the soot to ash and releasing it out the pipe. <clears throat> now when this light comes on it's telling you that your DPF regeneration is needed. Now usually that will come on because the truck itself has not been able to automatically do one while you're driving down the road. When it first comes on the first time there is no reason to uh, deviate from your current course or any stops you already have planned. I would advise you to your next rest stop or dinner. If you're waiting to do that and then it starts flashing then we're talking about a situation where you need to do it as soon as possible. What I would do is I would um, search for a closest rest area or a really safe, nice wide spot on the road you can pull over and sit for 30 minutes to an hour. Once you do that, go ahead and uh, do your regen. Now it does tell you here that if it's flashing that your engine derate is possible. Um, it would take quite a bit of time before it will start derating you. So again, I don't want you to worry if this light starts flashing. Just find a nice safe pull off and start your regen. So that brings me to this symbol right here, which is a hot exhaust symbol. When that light comes on, it's not a fault. It's not a problem. That light's going to come on during a regeneration, and it's going to stay on for some time after the regeneration is complete. It's just basically warning you that we've got exhaust temperatures well over 1,000 degrees and to stay clear of any of the exhaust components. So when we're talking about DEF, or diesel exhaust fluid, we want to keep our gauge monitored. That gauge is located on your dash. Okay, It's right underneath your fuel level gauge. So your diesel gauge is the analog gauge on top with the needle. Your DEF gauge is the little digital block gauge on the bottom. You want to be careful not to get those two confused. Now, uh, Many times a failed regen is usually because your DEF or the diesel exhaust fluid level is low. The diesel exhaust fluid is the little, the little fuel tank next to your main fuel tank. It has a blue lid on it. We want to keep those topped off at all times. So even if, if you're at a fuel stop and you've got less than a full tank of DEF and you don't really need diesel, I would advise you to go ahead and keep that thing topped off at all times because you never know when it's going to go into a regen and you never know how much DEF is going to need to do it. If the regen is not needed, in other words, if the filter is not plugged enough to do a regen, the tractor or the vehicle is not going to allow you to do one. This is not a maintenance item. It's not something um, that you know, you're going to, oh, it's Saturday, I'm going to do my regen. It's not like that. You need to wait for the vehicle to let you know that the regen is needed. In all honesty, there may be quite a long period of time where you may not even need to do one because the tractor is automatically doing it as you're driving down the road. Another thing is your coolant temperature needs to be up at 150 degrees or higher and you want to make sure you've got plenty of DEF in your tank. All right at this point I want to go ahead and walk you guys through um, the actual regen itself. 
So we're going to pretend that the light has come on. We pull over to a safe spot um, and we're going to go ahead and initiate the regen. So in order to do a regen, you need to communicate with the tractor. And the way that you can do that is through switches. So the tractor needs to know that the vehicle is parked and it's not going anywhere. If it's a manual tractor, you need to push in and release the clutch. And then on all tractors, you need to release the tractor brakes and then set the tractor brakes. Once you've done that, you have communicated to the tractor that the vehicle is not going to be in motion and it cannot move and you're safely parked. So I'm going to go ahead and depress the clutch, let off the clutch, go ahead and release the brake, set the brake. Now right here is your regeneration switch. It's a momentary switch. It doesn't stay in one position. It's spring loaded. So you'll push in on that switch and you'll hold it 15 to 20 seconds. And once the regen starts, you'll know because your RPMs will come up off of idle to around 12 to 1300 RPMs. Once that happens, you can release the switch and then you just wait for the regen to complete. You'll know when the regen's complete because the engine speed will return back down to idle. And as I said before, your hot exhaust temperature light will still be on. That's just a warning to let you know the exhaust is still hot and it will stay on for a little while until the exhaust is cooled off. Another point I want to touch on is if for some reason you're, you've started a regen and you need to move the vehicle or you need to cancel it for whatever reason, you can cancel it. All you have to do is either depress the clutch or release the tractor parking brake. Once you push one of those buttons, it's gonna take a few seconds for the computer to um, see that something's going on and it will cancel the regen and you'll know the regen is canceled because again, the engine speed will return back down to idle. Then you can go ahead and move your tractor or travel, do what you need to do and then you can restart the regen at a later time. Okay, so on the Volvo trucks, uh, we've got our sticker here on the underside of the visor um, and this is going to kind of explain to you what um, the symbols that are uh, illuminating on your dash are going to mean and um, the actions you can take to resolve the issue. Um, so there's three symbols regarding regeneration. The first symbol here is going to be a puff of smoke with water droplets. Okay, um, That is referring to the DEF or diesel exhaust fluid. That is the uh, tank next to your fuel tank with the blue cap. Um, you always want to keep that full. Uh, the second symbol is going to look like a puff of smoke going through a screen or a filter. That is regarding the DPF, which is the diesel particulate filter. That's the actual filter that is in the exhaust pipe itself. Now, as you're burning diesel in the engine, it's going to create soot, and that soot is going to get captured by the DPF. And that is what we do the regen for, is to clean that filter out. So when we regen, we're cleaning out the DPF. Okay, and your third symbol is right here. Okay, and that's a little puff of smoke with a temperature bulb. Okay, what that is talking about is hot exhaust temperature. And that will illuminate during and will stay illuminated for some time after your regen has completed. All that symbol is for is it's a warning to let you know that your exhaust temps are extremely hot. We're talking anywhere to 1,000, 1,100 degrees. So you want to keep your hands, your feet, any flammables, anything like that away from the exhaust while that stuff is hot and while that light is on. Now, one thing I want to point out is this right here is your DEF gauge and this is your actual diesel gauge so don't get the two confused all right so if we look here in the middle of our dash this is where we can communicate with the vehicle to request a parked regen so we're going to pretend that the light has come on and we need to request a parked regen the way that you're going to do that is you're going to use your joystick over here on the right which is your wiper controls on the wiper controls, you're going to see three buttons. One that says ESC for escape. One in the middle that has a little uh, bent arrow for enter. 
and you, on the very end you have up and down arrow keys. So this is how we're going to navigate through this screen here. So the first thing that we do is we can hit either the escape or the enter key and that will bring us up a list, a list of menus we can get into. And when we're talking about regens, only list we're concerned about is the after treatment list and that's selection four. Okay, and we're going to use the enter key to select it and then under that menu there's two sub menus gives us two options. We can request a parked regen or look at the ATS status or after treatment system status. Uh, we're going to get into that here in a minute but first we're going to request our parked regen. So I'm going to hit enter. The screen will say data transfer in progress. Please wait. Now that is us request, talking to the computer requesting it. Now the computer has responded back saying that the parked regen conditions are not met you need to check your ATS status menu. So what the truck is telling us is that we can't do a parked regen and if you want to know why you need to look in that ATS status menu. So what we do at this point is we can go ahead and hit escape. That'll bring us to our two sub menus. Highlight your ATS or after treatment system status menu and hit enter. Now this is going to give us six pages of uh, a checklist. You can't change any of these. This is a read only. You're going to get three options in here. You're going to get OK, check, or NA. Now if it says NA, it will never say check or OK. That means that that particular item is not applicable to this model of tractor. So if we look on this screen, we're at one of six pages. So the first page, clutch and PTO status are okay. So we don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to use the arrow key on the, on the end of the joystick here. Push it down one time. That brings us to page two. Accelerator pedal okay. Vehicle speed above is okay. Arrow down to page three. Park brake is okay. System fault is okay. So we're going to page down here. Page four. Temporary lockout says check. Right, so we're going to look at page 5, see if we can find some clues that's going on here. Inhibit switch is okay. Now on the last page, page 6, it's not a checklist, it's an actual soot level gauge. And that shows us the level of soot that we were talking about earlier that's actually in the filter. And if you look here, it's really, really low. Okay. Until you reach this arrow or A mark, you will not be able to do a regen. So that is why it has us temporarily locked out. It's because there's, it's just not dirty enough. It's not going to allow you to waste your time. When we're talking about the soot level gauge, okay, uh, the A or arrow mark is basically this yellow portion here. So if the truck is unable to do an automatic regen, it's going to start flashing this light. Now, this, flight's, this light's never going to come on just solid. It will start flashing. Just because it's flashing doesn't mean there's an emergency or anything like that, so don't let it scare you. It's just letting you know that the DPF is full, and it's, it's wanting you to initiate a parked regen at your next available stop. So that doesn't mean you need to do it alongside the road or pull over immediately. Um, your next rest stop, should, you should be, have sufficient time to get to a rest stop to do it. Now, if for some reason... You can't get it done in the right amount of time. Okay, it's going to continue flashing, and it's going to show your your check light on the dash as well. Now, what's happened is the DPF has continued to build up soot, and now you're in that zone two three area. Okay, on the on the soot level gauge, and that's saying now it's getting over full. Okay, it will derate the engine. Okay, and at this point, it says immediately stop and initiate parked regen. So, if that happens. I would look for a nice safe spot to pull off a nice safe shoulder in the road and go ahead and initiate your parked regen. Now, if for some reason we don't get that done and it keeps building up, it's going to continue flashing and then it's going to light up a red stoplight on your dash, okay? Now, that means the DPF's getting completely clogged and it's actually shutting, shutting the engine down. Okay, guys, uh, one last thing. Um, so let's say your truck has called for a regen and you're attempting to do a regen and you just can't get it to start regening. 
call the customer service department. I want to let you guys know that they have right in front of them the same sticker that you have on your visor. They all have this class. They have books in front of them with uh, diagnostic procedures. Um, they're going to ask you to do some things that you probably already have done or tried. Um, it's just part of protocol. We want to actually go through all the steps to make sure we're not missing something because the last thing we want to do is put you in a repair facility because we missed a step. Maybe we didn't release the park brake or maybe we didn't push the clutch. So don't be afraid if you can't get the regen to go, call customer service and they're going to be able to help walk you through it um, to make sure that it's not something simple that we can't go ahead and get fixed so we don't have to get you into a repair facility problem. So don't uh, hesitate to call them and uh, they're there to help you and they'll be able to get it handled for you.